doing a brake fluid flush today on the MDX because apparently YouTube likes uh, fluid change videos more than they like people cutting cars apart and welding them back together. So what we're going to do here is something you're probably not going to see anywhere else. This is a uh, boiling point tester. So what we're going to do is uh, 104 is pretty close to what it is today. It's about 90 something, 93. It was a little cooler the first time I tried. So I just press and hold this guy. I'm going to obviously edit this video. So 409 is the boiling point, which is actually pretty good. Uh, I like to use the valvoline stuff here. This is, I think, 480 dry. And I change my brake fluid to be up 480 dry. So I change my brake fluid every two years. Uh, if this were a customer's car, if I worked in a shop, I'd say this fluid's all right at 409. But I'm going to change it anyways because it's only like 15 bucks worth of fluid. All right, this is the most exciting brake fluid change you're going to see. Right out of the bottle, the Valvoline brake fluid, 86 degrees. It says there, right there on the label, uh, good to 480 dry. So this stuff is brand new. Let's heat it up and let's see what happens. Four eighty four, as advertised. Very impressive stuff. That's actually pretty dark for what I consider for my car as an owner. Uh, typically, like even after ten years, my rear calipers don't even see the pistons move freely because I change the fluid every two years. Suck everything out of the reservoir with a hand pump, and then I'll fill it back up with clean and flush it through the system. Sometimes you'll run into. A little bit you can't get in certain design of these tanks in the back bottom there so what you do is it gently fill it up in the front so you don't mix things around too much and then when you start flushing out it'll suck from the bottom old fluid goes out the caliper and you just keep filling up the reservoir from the front while flushing it's now full of uh, all new fluid except for that bottom portion then I'm gonna come back here start at the uh, farthest one for the heck of it and then all you do, you got a little tube to this guy that has a line going to the bottom. You don't have to crack it much, just about that much. And then I'm going to go pump the brake. And then this guy will fill up, I'll drain it, and I'll keep pumping until eventually I start seeing clear fluid. I will also keep topping off the reservoir as I do this. I don't know how you can see it on camera. I pumped it a few times. The fluid that was in the bottom is starting to disappear. It's getting sucked into the system come around to the side and you can see I'm filling up there dump a few the fluid coming out should almost look as clean as it is going in and then you crank it down and you're good to go same thing with the other corners you'll see the fluid come out dark at first and then I'll change it clear as you can now see all the fluid all the way down the lowest part is clean so that's the way I like my brake fluid to look now we're gonna do the transfer case I already cracked the fill and the drain loose and uh, hit my elbow underneath the vehicle pretty darn hard. So you guys didn't hear me uh, scream with that one. So now we're just going to unscrew this plug. Let that drain out. Now you see the transfer case is right next to the exhaust, so that fluid is going to get hot in there. So you definitely don't want to skip out on missing these when it bakes the fluid. Next thing I'm going to use here is uh, the Amsoil uh, Severe Gear with the Extreme Pressure Agents. This fluid is completely over-engineered and designed for a Honda, I mean the Acura that I have, because this thing will never do anything severe or ever handle anything severe, and it nor will it ever be able to withstand anything extreme. Uh, that's typically why you would buy like a domestic truck to be able to handle anything that's high torque. So this fluid should withstand the high temps and the pressures that this transfer case will see. So now we're going to take our oil in a bag, which is kind of weird your first time getting it. You kind of feel stupid like a Canadian buying milk in a bag and wondering what you do with it. But this is pretty interesting, so you just kind of get it up in there. Don't tell me I didn't open this. Well, that's 
going in. They do not. This is the other thing about milk in a bag. Oh, it's open. Is there a hole? Oh, there we go. See, there's a seal. Yeah. Okay, so now that I understand how to use oil from the bag, I got the seal out. Now we're going to fill this thing. Oh, there, yep, squirts it all right in. I'd say she's probably full now. Which, yep, does look that way. So, we'll put the drain plug in with our trusty oil in the bag fill method. So then you tighten everything up with 3 8 inch plug. Call it done. The drain and fill are both 20s for the transfer case. The rear diff was an 18 and a 20. So that's a 2017 MDX with the SH all-wheel drive advanced package but anyhow it's got the uh the fancy all-wheel drive contraption back here that was uh completely over engineered and delivers very little torque capacity but at least it can uh, help get you through some snow if you're going slow anyhow uh for filming youtube videos they put this hole in the frame so that i can get a good camera angle on the fill plug so there it is get right up in there with a ratchet if you want to go this way it's a six inch extension so i can film from uh youtube for there and then you got your drain here's your drive shaft and the drains right about here so, so let's see the flu is going to come draining out and for some strange reason on YouTube those videos tends to get uh, 10,000 views because people like watching fluid drain from gearboxes rather than building cars and it's a light tan and that to me smells like $30 in fluid going down the drain but uh, that's what cheap stuff is at the dealer so then I'm going to uh, obviously get that one and we'll finish filming this one up so you got to film it through the frame where they put the YouTube recording hole and put your ratchet on it, drag her loose, and then you just get up there and turn it, turn, 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 and then you can even see on camera after you drop the plug in the pan. So I got three quarts of the Honda dual pump fluid too. Now the thing is, uh, there's an Acura one they call all-wheel drive fluid. The difference is, is this part number here will have an A at the end, so it should be the same. Now the thing about it is I double checked even further because when it comes to gearbox design, here's the 2017 MDX, and then that's obviously the rear end where your SH all-wheel drive is, and there's the part number for the clutch kit for the rebuild. So then when I come over here, I went to Honda's website and I looked up a pilot. As you can see, it's the exact same part numbers for the clutch pack for the SH all-wheel drive unit. And then here's a list of all the pilots, 2017 through 19. So what this tells me is that Honda and Acura most likely, with a very high level of confidence, are using the exact same fluid. Because the metals in the gearbox have to be compatible with the materials. Most oils are unless they're using some type of goofy metal, but the friction modifier in the oil would match with the clutches. So that tells me that most like these two are the exact same clutches because it calls out the same clutch kit rebuild number. So that's why uh, I use the Honda because they're very close to where I live and the Acura dealer is pretty far away. Isn't the undercoating pretty? Had it, uh, come Z-Bar does undercoating here. Had it done in one of my other cars. It's about 10 years old and the underneath of the car only looks about 4 years old and the frame is still stiff as can be. So I'm just going to pump in each of the quarts, let it start overflowing. Another trick I'm going to do is I put the old washer back on here. So once it starts overflowing, you got to start the vehicle up so that this way the pump in there, you drive maybe down the street and back, nothing more than that, keep the fluid cool. 
we come back top it off after some of the fluid has gone through the pump too so that's the little guy I use to pump the fluid up and in so I got that little bit of extra in by biasing the vehicle forward with the jacks only about an inch and then a steady small stream is good and then cap it now what happens is with the little extra fluid it helps when you're on angles like going up parking garages in Chicago or something you get a little bit more uh, oil to your gears so I'm sure you don't want to see me tightening a drain plug for everyone that's always saying how much did you use one two and I used about oh, about two and a half and probably spilled about this much onto the ground I bought three but this job will practically take you almost two full gallons before I lift up this plastic piece here, I put towels over the engine compartment and tuck them up under this thing on the edges. Because when this thing pulls up, the engineer that designed this clearly was an intern or something because he had no accountability. These clips here, they just start going flying everywhere. They'll fly into the engine compartment, they'll go everywhere, and it's an adventure to try to find them. So you can see on the bottoms, on the bottom there, these clips, they just kind of snap in, but they're not held in very well. This is a very bad design. This guy should be fired. But anyways, these clips go flying, and when they drop down in, it's an adventure to find them in this engine compartment. So it just helps make your life easier. I mean, luckily here, this one pulled out of the plastic housing without damaging this. I'll have to pry that one out. Just another tip to make your life easier on these things. Turn the wheel well. I have the all-wheel drive version, so getting to the bleeder, you come up past your oil filter. And then you can see your engine block bleeder is right there. You just hit that with a ratchet from the top, or you can do it from the bottom, because you can easily get your arm through right next to the axle. It's a pretty clear shot. Pet cock on these, you got to take out the bolts that hold this up. I left the clips just because I'm too lazy. Then you take the, it looks like there's a bolt in the clip here. And then you pull the bumper forward a little bit by the lip, yank this shield out, and there it is. There's the pet cock that you have to hit nicely on the edge of, end of the radiator. So I'm going to stick a little funnel in here using my little sneak attack method to get to it and drain it down into a uh, pan, obviously. So that's a quick, easy way to do it. What else that's really cool about these here? The vehicle plant guys got their wish. If you notice, there's something missing down there. There's no transmission cooler hoses in the lower tank or radiator on this vehicle. So the vehicle guys got their dream. What happened was they took the lower radiator hose, which is the cooler coolant, and then they put it into a stacked plate heat exchanger on the transmission right there. You can see it in the center of the screen. So they took the coolant off of the hose, the lower radiator hose at the bottom, ran it to the heat exchanger, and then they also hit it back here on this thermostat housing. And this is the one that comes off the thermostat that goes to the hot side. So that's how they're doing the heat exchange on this. Instead of putting it in the actual radiator tank itself, now all the vehicle plant has to do, they don't have to worry about transmission oil and topping off the transmission. When the manufacturing plant for the transmission makes the trans, they fill it up and it's sealed and done. So all the vehicle plant has to do is just vacuum and fill the coolant system. No more messing with the transmission fluid level because that's a transplant's responsibility. So they finally won that war on this transmission. A little funnel. See the pet cut there? And then you can see that bottom shield almost looks perfect. It put it right into a pan. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. So let's see what happens when I go to unscrew this thing. It's beautiful. Doesn't get any cleaner than that. I like it already. Back bleeder on the engine blocks at 12. And what's great about this is they've left you so much room that you literally can just stick your hand in between the engine and the wheel well. 
and when you do to reach around with your hand, it falls exactly in place to where that bleeder is because they left you all the room in the world, amazingly. And see how easy the ratchet goes on? You could just crack it loose and bleed out the block, or drain it in this case. You can see, yes, after you drain the radiator, there is stuff that's still in the engine block. So it's a good idea to crack that guy loose. For my next magic trick, we're going to get to cool it out of the jug. Now what sucks about this is they integrated the vent into the cap, so you can't just take the end off the radiator, put it into a bucket, and then put your hand over it with a blowgun, and then pressurize the tank to shoot all the fluid out. So I'm going to take this some old piece of hose I have, I'm going to jam it all the way down to the bottom of the pump, or down to the bottom of the tank. And then I'm going to put my hand over it and use the blowgun to pressurize the tank to shoot the fluid out into the bucket. doesn't get much cleaner than that on uh, some of these newer cars these tanks almost take like taking apart half the car just to get the tank out if you want to drain it that way but this is the quickest easiest way that works on everything that I found wondering what that bleeder on the side of the engine block looks like you could put a hose on it if you wanted to but that's all it is go to put these screws back underneath the the bottom of the car, always put some anti-seize on them. You'll be thankful later on when you have to go drop that shield again. So to fill all basically new cars, you want to use a vacuum fill system, coolant vacuum fills, which you can search for on the internet. These things can be as found as low as 50 bucks nowadays. Uh, the one I got, it's airlift. Uh, I think it was like V1000 or UVU something. Anyhow, this is the one you put into the bucket of clean coolant. Then what I do is I use this venturi to suck out and vacuum down the system. And the reason why you do this is because the castings these days, unlike the old days, are so complex with the passages that they inherently will trap air. And it really sucks if that air bubble is sitting right up by your head gasket because it may just sit there, sit there, and then kill your head gasket in that one little spot where the air sat. The other one too, the heater cores nowadays are becoming more and more dense in order to get more heat capacity into the cabin from a smaller area. So if some of those things by their very design, the, all the air will not bleed out of them and you have to vacuum fill the system just to get the heater cores um, free of air. In. just a little bit top off and a radiator will be needed so this one's almost full so there's no air in the system <laughs> 